Hello, my name is George Aguilar. In today's discussion, we're going to be talking about the installation, operation, and maintenance of our CRD pressure reducing pilot. For any questions, please visit our website where you can download our CRD quick manual. Let's get started. Let's begin by talking about the features of a CRD pilot. As you will notice, there's a small weep hole in the cover of the pilot. When water's coming out of this hole, it's an indicator that there's either a rupture in the CRD diaphragm or that the diaphragm nut is loose. It's important to remember that if there's a hole in the diaphragm, then the pilot will no longer be able to regulate to a, a pressure setting. When possible, the weep hole should be orientated in a downward direction so that in the event of a diaphragm rupture, water is able to drain out of the cover. So if our weep hole is here, you want to make sure that it's facing down, able to drip out of the cover. There's also a flow arrow on the body of the pilot. So like this one here, a CRD has one inlet port and two outlet ports. This flow direction arrow is telling you that this is going to be our inlet. This port and this port here are both common. One's used to connect into the outlet of the main valve. The extra port here is used for a gauge assembly. Now let's look at a couple of different types of spring ranges that are available on the CRD. Our first one here is a green spring. The green spring has a 30 to 300 PSI range with 27 PSI adjustment per turn. The black one here is 20 to 105. This one has a 12 PSI adjustment per turn and with a spring range of 20 to 105. The red one is a 15 to 75 spring range. The red one has a 9 PSI per adjustment. And the gray is a 2 to 30 PSI range with a 3 PSI adjustment per turn. Now you'll notice, get this cover off here, you'll notice that as we turn clockwise on the adjustment screw, you see how we have no tension here, as we turn clockwise on the adjustment screw, the tension is going to increase on our diaphragm assembly. This is going to result in a higher pressure setting downstream. And counterclockwise, as we start to back out, the tension decreases, less pressure to close the CRD, and that is going to result in a lower setting downstream. Now before making any type of field adjustments on a CRD pilot, it's important to know the spring range on your CRD. In addition to the spring colors, the spring ranges are also shown on a sticker on the black cap here, or in this case here, a brass ID tag on the cover. Lastly, we're going to discuss the types of repair kits that are available for the CRDs. There's two types of repair kits that are available and the selection is based on the spring range on your pilot. So first, for low pressure ranges such as 2 to 6 and 2 to 30, we're going to use a repair kit for a CRD. Now this repair kit here includes your diaphragm, a gasket for the body plug, this hollow ended disc retainer assembly, the spring, and a couple of extra screws. Now for the higher spring ranges such as 15 to 75 or a 30 to 300, the suggested repair kit is for a CDHS 18. The CDHS-18 components are the same as a CRD repair kit. So again, diaphragm, body plug, a couple of extra screws, but the difference is, is a solid disc retainer assembly. So this is the one from the CDHS-18 repair kit, and this hollow ended here is for the CRD repair kit. 
For additional information regarding a CRD parts list, spring ranges, and repair kits, please download our quick manual located at clayvalve.com. Now we're going to discuss the operation of the CRD. The CRD is a spring-loaded, bottom-seated, normally open pilot control. So the force of this spring tension here is pushing the disc assembly, it's pushing this disc assembly off the seat, which is located at the end of this nozzle. And our seat's going to be right below there. So as the outlet pressure rises to the spring tension setting, the diaphragm flexes upward and the spring is compressed. So now you have this spring tension. Your downstream pressure is pushing up on this. As this happens, the yoke assembly rises, causing the disc to seal against the seat here, causing the main valve to close. The main valve is going to mimic whatever the pilot control is doing. As the pressure drops below the spring setting, the force of the spring is going to be pushed away from the seat. The pilot is going to open, allow flow through the pilot, and the main valve is going to begin to open. Since this pilot is continuously sensing outlet pressure, the pilot will modulate between both open and closed positions as the downstream demand varies. Now we're going to cover some troubleshooting. If you notice that you're having issues with the pilot opening, there are a couple things you should check. First, you're going to want to make sure that the adjustment screw is making contact with the spring and that there is back pressure there or that you're making contact with the spring with our adjustment screw here. Otherwise, if there's no type of pressure on the spring, any type of downstream pressure is going to push this assembly up. So let's say we have no spring tension right now. Any type of pressure is going to close our CRD. So again, you want to make sure that that is making contact, the adjustment screw is making contact with the spring. Now there's a couple of uh, ways that that could happen. The first thing that you want to make sure is that your spring guide is connected or is that it's on sitting on top of the spring here. If this spring guide has fallen off to the side, if it's not sitting on the top just like that, then your spring is not going to make any contact. It's going to end up going right through the spring and you won't have any type of spring tension. Secondly, you want to make sure that your spring is not damaged. If your spring hole is damaged, again, because of that weep hole, if that weep hole was not positioned on the cover correctly, then what maybe water got in the cover, it wasn't able to drain out, and now your spring is damaged. Lastly, you want to make sure that the yoke, the yoke here is not dragging on the nozzle. And again, I'll, I'm going to demonstrate that during our CRD repair kit installation and how to verify that the yoke is properly installed. Now let's take a look at a couple causes if the CRD fails to close. First, you want to make sure that there's not too much tension on the spring. Again, too much tension. If this adjustment screw is too far down, again, this is going to need to sense downstream pressure. If there's too much tension on the spring, it's not going to be able to push up on that diaphragm assembly. If so, back out on that adjustment screw until you start to see a little bit of change in downstream pressure. You want to verify that the disc is not worn. Again, I'll demonstrate that during the repair kit installation on how to replace that disc. But to get to that disc, you're going to remove that body plug and there's your disc right there. Lastly, verify that there's not any type of obstruction inside the CRD. Make sure there's no type of rocks or anything inside this nozzle. Again, you can remove this body plug here and check for any type of debris or obstructions that have come down the line. And again, making sure that that yoke is not dragging against the nozzle there.
Okay, now onto the rebuild. So the first thing that we're gonna do here, we're gonna remove the tension of the spring on the cover. So we're gonna take our cover off. We're gonna loosen up the jam nut here. And we're gonna remove the tension on the spring. Again, the CRD is a spring-loaded valve, so we wanna make sure that we remove the spring so that when we get these screws off and we go to take the cover off, that this cover is not gonna pop up off on us so we're gonna remove that tension. Now that we remove that tension, you're gonna get a Sharpie, and you wanna make some type of witness mark indicating the cover to the body like I did here. That's important, again, you wanna make sure that this weep hole is lined up. So if you have this pilot facing in this position, you wanna make sure that weep hole is lined lined up in that same position so that way the water can drain out if it has to be. So now that we've got our witness mark, we remove this tension. Now we're gonna get to the body plug. We're gonna remove this body plug here. Again, in our repair kit, we get one of these gaskets. So we're gonna take this gasket and we're gonna put it aside. So we have our body plug. Once you remove that body plug, now you have access to the body here where you can access the disc. So we're gonna take that disc out first. It's important to get that disc out first. If you don't get that disc out, you will not be able to get the yoke assembly out of the body. So there's our disc. We're gonna take that disc. That disc again is in the repair kit. So we're gonna put that aside. Now we can take the screws off so we can get the cover. Carefully remove the cover. You wanna carefully remove the cover so that way we don't lose our spring or our spring guide. So we'll put those aside. Now we have access to the yoke assembly. Again, removing that disc will allow you to pull back that yoke assembly with no problem. Again, that's where that disc fits in there. If you don't remove that disc, you won't be able to get that yoke assembly out. So now that we have the body visible here, now you can take a look around the nozzle area, make sure that there's no wear, any type of buildup around the nozzle. If we flip that around, you can see inside here, that's where your seat is. Make sure the seat's in good condition. Now you can grab your 400 wet dry sandpaper and clean off the edges right here where it's making contact with the diaphragm. Now that you've done that, you're good with the body. Now we can get to the yoke assembly. So now here we're gonna take a screwdriver, we're gonna put a screwdriver in the middle of where this yoke assembly is. We're gonna grab our wrench and we're gonna loosen up the stem nut. We'll loosen the stem nut. We're gonna get our Belleville washer, our diaphragm washer, our diaphragm. Again, the diaphragm is gonna come in the repair kit. I'm gonna put that aside as well. And now we have our yoke. So this yoke here, again, just take, uh, just take a look around the nozzle, make sure there's no wear, any type of buildup. Once you've confirmed that the yoke is in good position, now we get to our repair kit. So again, the repair kit that I'm using here is the CDHS 18 repair kit because I'm using the green spring. So we'll get the components out for the repair kit. Again, you have the diaphragm with the date stamp. That date stamp is the cure stamp of when the material was purchased and how old the rubber goods are. You have a new gasket for the body plug, a new disc. Again, this disc does not have the slot for the bucking spring and a couple of extra screws. So we're gonna take our yoke. Again, take notice of the yoke. The yoke has these record serrations. That's where it's making contact with the diaphragm. We're gonna grab our diaphragm. We're gonna place our diaphragm with a date stamp facing up. You want that date stamp facing up just for future reference so you can see what that cure date is. So now we're gonna grab our diaphragm washer. 
Again, the diaphragm washer also has those record serrations. Those record serrations are going to be facing the diaphragm. We have our Belleville washer. Our Belleville washer is going to be facing down. The concave is going to be facing down. And we have our stem nut. Now the CRD is one of the uh, diaphragms, has one of the diaphragms that actually has a certain order where you need to put the diaphragm. So in this case here, you need to line up any of these two holes of the diaphragm, any of these two holes with the arms of the yoke like I have here. Once you have these two holes lined up, we're going to tighten down on that stem nut. After you've tightened that down, double check to make sure that those holes line up. It's important to have those holes lined up because when you put this yoke assembly in this nozzle or in the body here, you can see where the arms of the yoke are going to slide over the nozzle there. So now that we have our yoke assembly in place, we're going to grab our spring, our spring guide, and we're going to put our cover on. Now remember we made those witness marks earlier. We need to make sure that we find those witness marks like I have there. Now that you've lined up those witness marks, we'll put, we'll get these screws back on. Now we can get our new disc. Again, we have a new gasket for our body plug here. We'll get that installed. Get that tightened up. We'll put our cover on. And now we're ready for the startup. That concludes the maintenance and operation of our CRD. For further information regarding our pressure reducing control, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.